Shaitan ar-Rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi Shirah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa halu luqtatam min lathani yafqahu qali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to today's program. I'd like to start by congratulating everyone. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. We are able to have another day of the holy month of Ramzan. The month of blessing, the month that we are the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month where we have so many opportunities given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to improve ourselves, to become better people, to so many different things, to improve our level in paradise and to um, get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, today we're going to be talking about one of, if not the most important aspects of the holy month of Ramzan, and that is fasting. Now, everyone talks about fasting. There's so many different discussions about fasting, whether it's talking in the masjid um, about, you know, how our fast went. I always ask, you know, people all the time, I ask them, I say, oh, so how was your fast today? You talk about sahri, you talk about, you know, waiting in line, while waiting in the line for iftar, and you talk about fasting. So, of course, the physical aspects of fasting. And there's many different ways that we can make that easier for ourselves. There's many different blessings for fasting. Not only is it a something that, you know, we're able to control that part of ourselves, we're able to control ourselves from constantly feeling the need to eat and drink all day. So we're able to have that form of self-control. And you can see that um, there's a saying, in, there's a verse in Surah Baqarah, it says, O believers, prescribed for you is the fast, even as it was prescribed for those that were before you. Happily, you will be God-fearing. Now, taqwa is with the meaning that you can see of holding yourself back from sin. We did many different conversations regarding the, um, you know, the different sins that some of the, you know, that were called the greater sins. And we talked about those and we talked about how it was more important to refrain from sin than to do good deeds. If I have the option to either, you know, do something good, donate to charity, do some amazing deed, help somebody out in need, or have the option to not do something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like, then it's better to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like. To at least be in that middle area, that kind of middle of the road, where I'm just, I'm not going to sin, you know, I'm just going to stand here, I'm not going to do anything. It's better to do that than to try to do a bunch of good deeds while at the same time making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry with us. And so this is what we do with part of the fasting. We're holding ourselves back. We're gaining that control. It's a form of self-control. And most forms of sin originate from two sources. These two sources are anger and desire. And fasting is something that helps us control these two sins and it reduces this corruption inside of us and it helps us to improve our taqwa improve that within ourselves and of course um, if you look at fasting you look at the idea of fasting compared to other forms of worship compared to other good things let's say for example khums let's say for example, doing a good deed in front of other people. Fasting is a form of worship that we can see that can go unnoticed and it can be hidden from others. For example, you know, you wake up in the morning, you have your sahri, you fast the entire day, you have the iftar. That's why it's an important thing that it's not something that everybody can see. It's kind of something within yourself. You know, if you walk down on the street, unless you're, um, you know, unless you're whining about it and you're, oh, I'm so hungry and you're 
making a big deal about it. It's something that can go kind of unnoticed. And this is a good thing because it keeps down that part of ourselves that only wants to do something so everybody can see. Now, of course, that's without saying it's more unnoticeable than something else, but obviously, still, if you go to the masjid and you're like, well, I fasted today and it's, you know, trying to show off about it, then that wouldn't be a good thing. Um, but what fasting also does is it increases that feeling of kindness within ourselves. It increases that humility that we can feel that hunger and that thirst. We always see videos online of so many different people throughout the world who are struggling from hunger, who don't have enough food to eat. They don't have, you know, bread to eat. And we, a lot of us, we go through our kitchens, we have plenty of food to eat. In fact, one of America's biggest problems is snacking. There's so many, everybody's constantly snacking, we're always eating. If I'm watching TV, I'm, there's a bowl of cereal with me. Or I'm having chips, or I'm having this, or I'm having that. So we don't have that closeness. We don't have that understanding. But when we're fasting, we're at least able to have somewhat of a perspective. Like, you know, when it's, the time is 3 o'clock, and there's a couple hours left until Liftar, and you're thinking, you know, oh, I'm kind of hungry. My throat is kind of dry. I could kind of, you know, oh, I wish I had water right now. That's that extra level of feeling. So it improves, it, you know, increases the feeling of kindness within ourselves. And of course, one of the main aspects is the patience. That, okay, you know what, there's a, you wake up in the morning. And I think that's the biggest time, right after Fudger, is the biggest time. Because even though if you've had something for Sehri, it happens to me all the time. I mean, I have... Even I have a big sehri, drink plenty of water bottles. As soon as I find out, well, it's namaz time, I read my namaz, I'm like, I'm kind of thirsty, you know. But at the end of the day, that's just, you know, it's just how it is. You kind of feel thirsty after, even if your, your body physically doesn't need it. If you have already had water, you're not, it's not like you're, you know, about to die of dehydration. You've already had water. But still, there's that kind of feeling because you know how far it is. You know it's the whole day away. And so, the Prophet, peace be upon him, has said that fasting is half of patience. Gaining that patience. Gaining that, okay, you know what? This is the time. And as the days of Ramzan go by, we see this every year. That on the first day, can't wait for Iftar to come. Maybe you're thinking about iftar the entire time. You're thinking, I can't wait for iftar to come. Whether you're going to the masjid, whether you're ordering something, I just can't wait. You're looking on your phone, you know, you're scrolling through TikTok, or you're, you know, you're looking at something and you're like, ah, oh, food. You're just thinking about food. But as the days go by, that food becomes less and less important. Now it's because that's your schedule. I eat in the morning. I eat at, you know, before Fudger, Fudger 5.45. 3, 545, I believe it is, right now. So you're thinking, hey, I'm going to eat at, you know, maybe 5 o'clock, maybe 5.10. And then I'm going to eat after eat after Isha. So that becomes your schedule. It becomes, you know, you're able to gain that level of patience that you understand this is the time I eat, this is the time I don't eat. It becomes easy for you and it becomes throughout the entire month. And that's when you're able to focus more and you actually have more energy. You would think that you have less energy, but you actually gain more energy through this. Because that's one less thing that you have to think about. You don't have to think about that. We have that privilege. Alhamdulillah, most of us, we have that privilege that we're able to, you know, at least have some sort of food. And of course, a lot of people don't have that. So that's one of the things that we have that we can even see I'm going to have something for iftar. Alhamdulillah, um, you know, we have that. And so, you know, of course the fasting, you know, now that's the one aspect, the physical aspect. And then there's the other, um, which is the abstinence from sin, refraining from sin. And after that, it's not only about, you know, not... Um, sinning, not doing the basics, like, okay, don't lie. Of course, there's many things that can break your fast. For example, swearing can break your fast. 
um, you know, getting really angry, that'll break your fast. There's many different things that will actually break your fast. So thinking about that as well, that refraining from sin, and that in itself gives you another form of self-control. But it's also about emptying your heart once you get past that phase. So there's the first, there's, I'm not going to eat. So we fast, fasting is watching upon us. So for the days of Ramzan, then you get to that point, once you're done with that aspect of eating, then you get to abstaining from sin. So then the certain things that you would do, you don't do, you know you're not supposed to do, you don't do these things while you're fasting. You at least have that level. Then after that, you go to the spot where you end up removing everything from your heart except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All these extra things that are going on, all the little things that you do maybe on a normal day don't really matter. But instead now all you're thinking about is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're thinking about reading Quran. You're thinking about how can I make the most of my fast? And there's many different ways to do that. And so the Prophet says that anyone who fasts for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their entire sins will be forgiven. Now think, why do I fast? This is the important thing that you understand. Now why am I fasting? Now obviously, many of us, as we know, you, there's some, you know, a lot of people, they're fasting either because they're forced to fast, their parents are like, well, gotta fast. And so, you know, it's like one of those videos where they're sleeping in bed and somebody's, wake up, it's every time. You have five minutes to eat, you're like, oh my gosh. You're forced to fast. So you fast throughout the day. Then there's, of course, you want to, you know, let's say you're doing it for other people. Now, obviously, well, this requires a level of honesty in itself in terms of if somebody goes to the masjid, you know, let's say every night or every other night you're going to the masjid, and so in order to maybe fit in or maybe, you know, look good in front of other people, you're like, oh yeah, I fasted. Now, if you were to fast just for that reason, I must say that is, you know, decently impressive because the person could simply just lie, say, well, I didn't, I fasted. Yeah, of course I fasted. You could do that. So at least you fasted. And then there's, of course, doing it, you know, of course, because everybody else is doing it, maybe your family members are doing it, so you're doing it. And it's not really, you know, a connection. But all, the main sawab that you get is when you understand that the fasting is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's with everything. Even reading the Quran, there's a point where, you know, maybe your parents make you learn the Quran, and once you learn the Quran, you know, you're kind of forced to read it every whatever, and... Maybe Sunday school, they made you read eat of the Quran, you know, whatever. Then you get to that point where you're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you're also doing it for yourself. You feel, it actually makes you feel good to fast. There's that feeling of goodness to read the Quran. It makes you feel good about yourself. But that's something you don't find if you're doing it for the wrong reasons. If I'm constantly doing things for other people, if I'm constantly, you know, fasting with the wrong intention then you're not going to be able to get that. So that's why it's especially important that we realize why we're fasting. We're fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even making that niyat, even making that different niyat when I fast compared to the niyat of I'm fasting gorbat an iftar. You know, when nighttime comes, I'll be at the masjid, you know, at least I can say I fasted or, you know, whatever your reasons is. So keeping that niyat for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, inshallah, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, has said, their entire sins will be forgiven. And this is the month where entire things are changed. The month, holy month of Ramzan. Now even look, for example, the Quran. One verse of the Quran equal to one Quran. A lot of people don't get to that Quran on a normal day. It takes us a good amount of time. So even one verse will get you past that. And so, looking in, um, for example, that we can see that even during the month of Ramzan, breaking of the fast. Now we have, we have Sehri, we went over 
a couple of the aspects of fasting, the pure fasting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But of course there are the, you know, the different conditions. Now you're not, you're required to fast. Muslims are required to fast. But like everything, there are certain conditions. For example, if somebody is traveling somewhere, they're not obligated to fast. It says in Surah Al-Baqarah, for days numbered. And if any of you be sick, or if he be on a journey, then a number of other days, and for those who are able to fast, a redemption by feeding a poor man. Yet better it is for him who volunteers good, and that you shall fast is better for you, if you but know. Now, these are the laws that Islam has. So if you're traveling somewhere, unless it's for you know, work, if it's for a job, this is something, you know, your livelihood, or even, you know, you're traveling for work and it's, you know, your school, then of course you're allowed to do it. But if somebody is sick, for example, if somebody throws up, you know, these are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that says you don't have to fast. To not put yourself in physical jeopardy. You know, if somebody's sick, they have a bad condition, then they fast, make it even worse. No. But you can then when you're able to, you make up those days. So, the, it's even at the point where, you know, you're thinking, oh, well, what if you do, if, you know, for example, if you're traveling and you're able to fast, you say, oh, well, you know, what if I do do it? Of course, you're actually not allowed to do it. There's a story that the Holy Prophet, Sallallahu was traveling with a group of companions, and the companions had maintained their fast while they were traveling and they didn't even they didn't want to break it they thought okay we're gonna you know we can just fast anyway and the prophet identified them as sinners imam al-sadiq alayhi salam has also said that if someone observes a fast during travel i will not be praying upon his body the prayer of the deceased so not only is it, well, you know, that's the law. If you're traveling, you can't physically fast. It's something that you actually can't do without the, of course, the right circumstances. But that's what the Prophet ﷺ identified them as sinners. So these are just some of the things to keep in mind as well. Um, understanding what fasting is. Understanding how to make the most of fasting understanding why we fast these are the different things because we don't want to make anything everything we do we should always see it as the phys the spiritual form not the physical form because as i know this body i have obviously we want to take care of this this is something that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and we want to take care of it as much as we can imagine you're a, you're one of your best friends really good friends somebody you actually respect if they lend you something you want to give that back to them in you know the same condition if not better you don't want to ruin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like our best friend he's that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has looked after us throughout our entire lives he continues to look after us and we're Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guest in this month so it would be wrong if we have such this big opportunity we have this, we have, um, you know, this huge opportunity. We have such a big opportunity and we don't use it. It would be wrong. It would be wasteful of us. And so looking at everything from that perspective, that there is something beyond this. Obviously, here's my physical body. I'm fasting. But to make the most out of it and look at it from the spiritual side, looking at it that I have to make the most out of this. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has lent me this body and one day it's going to be returned to him. So what's the property that I have? Now, I don't have this body. I'm renting this body. It's something that, it's a, it's a loan to me. It has to go back one day. I don't know when that day is, but one day I'm going to receive a call and one day I'm going to have to return it. And so what I do have though is my soul. The soul is something that, that's what you have. That's actually you, whatever I think of myself as. This isn't me. What, I'm the, the soul. And so, looking through that on the day of judgment, that even through this fast, what do I want to gain from this fast? 
I'm doing the required in terms of I'm not eating, but what do I want to gain from that? I want to gain that closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to gain the most out of it that I can. I want my sins to be forgiven. So having that right intention and doing things for the right reasons and gaining the most out of the fast. So how else can I gain the most out of the fast? I'm looking at, for example, abstaining from different things. I'm looking at my niyyah being just for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another way to go through that is through the breaking of the fast. You have to look at these different, the different angles, the different spots that you can make a difference and that you can get the most sawab you can. And so another one of those spots is the breaking of the fast. And the Prophet has stated that anyone who provides food or water for someone breaking their fast, praise is sent to them every hour by the angels and on the night of power by Archangel Jibrail. So throughout this, even giving something we read in the Prophet Muhammad we read in his sermon, his sermon that he gave, uh, the Sermon of Shabaniya, and he said that for someone who even gives, you know, a glass of water, he tells them, you don't have to give somebody a whole iftar. Even giving someone a glass of water, even giving someone a date to break their fast, praise will be sent for them, and angels will pray for them every hour. Now, when are the, imagine not only are we getting sawab when we breathe in this month, we're getting sawab that everything that we do, every little thing, even breathing, I get sawab. And I'm, inshallah, have the tawfiq, the fast all the days in this month. I'm getting all this sawab. Now imagine even on top of that, angels are praying for you. Every hour the angels are praying for you. And on the biggest night of the month of Ramzan, when the Quran was revealed, the angel Jibrail will also pray for you. These are the things to keep in perspective of how big that is. I think a lot of times when you look through, for example, if you, know, if you just hear something or you read a verse, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of up in the clouds because it's like, it's so big, but you can't, sometimes you can't even comprehend that. But think of it as a physical thing that angels pray for you every hour by just, you know, providing food or water to someone to, for breaking their fast. That's how important it is. And there's, in Surah Al-Insan, it says, we feed you only for the sake of God. Providing, um, for example, something as simple as a glass of water. It's a kind of honor. And it instills, you know, some type of a happiness in the believers. And it's, that's the main thing to think about is it's not about cooking a big meal for somebody. It's not about doing something big, giving them a whole plate of food, giving them some big thing. It's a glass of water. It's a date, just so they break the fast. So that's the little spots that you can look at, even in the masjid, I always see that there's, you know, some kids or something and they're handing out dates or they're handing out water bottles. And I'm thinking, I gotta, that, that has to be me. So that's why the little opportunities I see, you know, for example, I see a water bottle on the side. Well, oh, here's a water bottle. So I'll go, oh, they'll just take it. Little things like that, finding that little thing to get that much sawab from something as small as a glass of water, providing um, something to break fast is a cause for softening of the heart as well. Um, and it's a source of forgiveness for oneself. And it also provides benefit and goodness to parents. Now, of course, the aim shouldn't be to show off, as we see with anything. We don't want to, you know, be, pretend to be, um, you know, oh, you know, we're so whole, you know, I don't know how to say it. Just showing off, you know what showing off is. We don't want to be seen as, you know, higher than we are, trying to look good, like, oh, here, I'm giving everybody water, you know. No, but of course, it is a good thing, but you can't let it get to your head and, you know, make it something so that you think higher of yourself because of it. No, but it is a pretty big thing that 
If you can try to give somebody a water bottle, if you can try to give somebody, you know, a date, it's a, it's a pretty big thing. Um, and of course, whoever it is, you know, to help them break their fast, it's a huge thing. Um, but of course, even when breaking our fast, you have to make sure that we have to maintain a certain level of respect throughout the month of Ramzan. There's a certain level of respect that you should have for yourself, for others, for everyone throughout this month. It's not just while you're fasting. That misconception that I'm a one person while I'm fasting and then I'm a com the complete opposite after is, you know, it's not the right idea. We want to maintain that level of respect. Even when we're breaking our fast, there's still a level that you have to maintain in terms of, you know, one shouldn't you know, commit sin at the dinner table. You don't want backbiting or, you know, swear, any of these things that will make it, will help you lose the sawab. You don't want that to happen. You want to be able to maintain that level of respect throughout the entire month of Ramzan. So we looked at a good number of things. And I think that what can be taken from everything, from the sayings of the prophets, from the sayings of the Imams, from looking inside of the Holy Quran, what the Holy Quran tells us to do, we can see that fasting is that gateway for us, that gateway to use the month of Ramzan to the best of its ability, to get as much as we can out of this month, not just, you know, not eating. Of course, it'll help us with that aspect as well but to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have our sins forgiven, to have the angels pray for us, to get all of the best benefits out of this month. We can use fasting. We can use the different aspects of fasting. We can use giving somebody a glass of water. We can, during sehri, giving somebody food during sehri, giving you know, a glass of water to somebody when they're breaking their fast. Something as little as that, that can make the difference in the end for this month. Because at the end of the day, no matter what we did throughout the year, the month of Ramzan is a different month. You should see it as a completely different month. We should be on a, this is a different universe from where we were last time. We're the guests of the Almighty Creator. And so, to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have this month, to be grateful that we have another chance of this month, of the best of months, is a big thing. And inshallah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us more tawfiq, and inshallah, get the most out of our fasting. Well, that's all the time we have left for today. Now I'm going to do Allahumma kulwaliyika for the safety and protection of our 12th Imam. May Allah hasten his appearance. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma kulli waliyaka al-hujjat ibn al-hasan Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abai Fi hadhi sa'a wa fi kulli sa'a Waliyan wa hafidha wa qaidan wa nasira Wa dalilan wa ayna حتى تسكنه أرضك توا وتمتعه فيها تفيلا برحمتك يا رحمن رحيمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وجل فجر. I hope everyone's fast goes well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'll see you next time. خلاص.